Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. Let's start by summarizing our problem. Two uniformly charged rings are arranged as follows. The bigger rings have a total charge Q with a radius C and the small ring um, with a total charge minus Q and the radius D. They are concentric and coplanar. So the question is e. What is the electric potential at the point P? Thus, um, thus it located at the distance R from the center of Turing, that's icon O. And in this case, consider R really, really big with B and C. What is the electric potential at point P due to the point charge Q? We are using the formula V equal K Q over R, where R is the distance between Q and point P. So K is the known value. How about the electric potential of a charged ring? Suppose that we have a charge ring with the total charge Q and we know that the charge per unit left is lambda equal Q over 2 pi A where A is the radius of the ring. Suppose that we can divide the ring into equal infinitesimal charges that I call delta Q here. So what is the electric potential at point P? Uh, due to the single dq. We can write the dv is just the electric potential due to the single dq equal k dq over r where r is the distance between dq to point p here. So using the try trigonometric um, formula like r square equal x square plus a square we can find r here equal square root of x square plus a square the dv here is just the electric potential due to the single dq how about we want to find the total electric potential um, due to the whole rings? So in that case, we want to sum over all electric potential due to the infinitesimal charges. It means we have a lot of dq here. We need to sum all over um, dv due to the single dq. So we can write out the v at point P, that's I call, will be K up, uh, will be sum over on a possible dV. Because the ring is a continuous charge distribution, we have to use the integration. So we put this formula into this, and we got K dQ over square root of x square plus a square. Remember, x and a here is just a, a number, a constant number. So actually, we can take them out of the integration, of the integral, and write out k 
um, d cube over square root of x square plus a square. Now, the final step is so simple. When we integrate all over, uh, all over uh, the infinitesimal charge d cube, we get the total charge of the ring, which is the big Q right here. So when we integrate this, we get this. So this is the final answer for the electric potential um, at point P due to the ring carrying the charge big Q. The electric potential depends on X, A, K and Q. So in this case, we want to find the relationship um, between X and V and A. So what happened in the case we have A is really really small compared with X. It means we have a point P is really really far away from the rings. So look at this formula. I just factor out X. So when A is really small compared to X, we have a over x close to zero and the v become kq over x okay it looks similar and actually it is the electric potential due to a pole charge the this equation makes sense because at a distance really far away from the rings we can consider the rings at a point charge. Back to our problem. Now we want to find the total electric potential at the point P um, that's located at really really far away from two rings right here. So in this case R is really large compared with C and B. So as we mentioned before the electric potential due to the ring with total charge Q is equal K Q over R. In this case, we already use the approximation due to the condition where R is really large compared with the radius of the ring. And similarly, we get the electric potential due to the ring with the total charge minus Q equal K minus Q over R. Alright? So the total electric potential is just simply add up two of them V at P equal V due to Q plus V due to minus Q. Aha, that's interesting because when you sum them up, they cancel and will give the answer zero. So that's the answer for our problem. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.